Danny Phantom's a kid's cartoon about a boy whose parents irresponsibly get him killed, thus turning him into a ghost. Now he saves the world as a ghost. The message of this show, kids, if you want superpowers, just die. Danny Phantom. Now that I got you all caught up, season 3 of Danny Phantom is often regarded by fans as the worst in the series. Most lay the blame on several of the writers leaving the show, mainly Steve Marmel, who was there from the beginning helping to develop the series, yet absent here. I asked you all on social media, what ruined season 3? I got a lot of the same answers, newbie writers, characters getting dumbed down, subplots never resolved, and Danny's rivalry with Valerie disappearing. What I want to talk about for this video is the grand finale to this series, the TV movie Phantom Planet. A special in which Danny chooses to give up his powers while a big meteor is coming to smash the Earth. What will the planet do? Find out! I was gonna cover season 3, but you know what, I'm not feeling it. So I'll just do this TV movie. A TV movie that filled me with... What? Huh? Why? It's so baffling. So let's find out why Phantom Planet is the 11th worst cartoon ever in no particular order. It's Juice and Jam time. The overall problem with this special lies in the very end credits. Each history's greatest monster! No, not him. After that, they had one, two, three, four, five, eight storyboard artists working on this special. I've heard from behind the scenes TV movies like Regular Show and Billy and Mandy the movie are always the hardest episodes to do. The crew have to work on creating a new season of episodes on top of a TV movie at the same time. A movie that's several times longer than the usual episode, yet only serves as new content for one night. So to get a TV movie finished, many artists have to rotate in and out, each making changes and adding their own vision to the story, which in the end will just blur the focus. It's fairly common the TV movie of a series would have so many storyboard artists. It doesn't mean it'll be bad, it just has more potential to screw up. Ah, oh, home sweet home. Nothing like good old solid terra firma. Now, let's recap Phantom Planet. It's just a usual day for Danny and his friends when C-list bad guy Technus is stealing electronics from the local Steven Universe store. Danny casually decides to knock him the f- <laughs> <laughs> Punches him so hard, Danny destroys the very thing Technus was stealing. This implies Danny don't give a fuck. Technus retaliates by making a stupid Michael Bay robot out of a car, but it looks like there's a new sheriff in town. Downloaded, cha. Uh, who are those guys? I don't know, but those are the coolest jumpsuits I've ever seen. Here we meet Masters Blasters, a ghost-busting team hired by the mayor and millionaire douchebag Vlad Masters to protect the city. He's kinda the Lex Luthor of the show, except he also has ghost powers in secret. As mayor, I provided city funding for this top-notch troop. Equipped with the latest team technology, they're going to stop ghosts and succeed where Danny Phantom has so obviously failed. Oh yeah, I trust my government to protect me from ghosts with teenagers armed with a pink skateboard, a zoon, and a functional music player. These master blasters are hired to protect the city while Vlad gets the credit, thus overshadowing Danny Phantom's fame. I remind you, at this point in the series, the world is aware of Danny protecting the city, but at the same time, Vlad is secretly an evil ghost. Only the main trio knows he's a ghost, so they find him wanting to protect the city very suspicious. But Danny's friend Sam, aka goth girl even I wouldn't tap, has an idea to defeat the Master Blasters. They can't fight ghosts if there are no ghosts to fight, right? Uh, right? So you just fight ghosts like crazy! Yeah! Remind everyone in this town how there's no better ghost fighter than Danny Phantom. Oh, okay Sam, Danny can just increase his workload. Let him further risk his life and overwork himself fighting ghosts because it was so easy before. This leads into a montage of Danny hunting after ghosts, only to be outmatched by the blasters and humiliated. <laughs> Oh, how silly. If only Danny could turn invisible. Danny hunts after more ghosts, only to get humiliated again. <laughs> oh 
Oh, how silly. If only he could turn invisible. Then Danny hunts after even more ghosts, only to get humiliated yet again. <laughs> Oh, how silly! If only he could turn invisible! If only he was some sort of phantom that could make himself transparent to humans! But no, he's just a normal underage boy who doesn't have any powers while the press is willing to photograph him exposed for the public to see. It's been a rough week as Master Blasters are the star of the town getting their own parade and fans. Who needs Danny Phantom anymore? Did you say Danny Phantom? He's wonderful! He's my hero! But he's yesterday's news! Master's Blasters gave us cool stuff! Master's Blasters stop disasters! When somebody loved me Everything was beautiful. We return back to Danny's parents' laboratory, where he talks with his close friends. Danny's parents, who don't know he's a ghost, are also in the room. That means it's the perfect time to talk about giving up his secret powers. Can we stop talking about my powers, please? They're causing me nothing but problems lately. I'm starting to think that maybe we'd all be better off without them. Oh, good thing those very quiet welding torches blocked out their secret conversation. Hmm, who could that be at this hour? <laughs> ruh -roh, spaghetti -o, it's the Popo. Our readings indicate an ectoplasmic entity on the premises. By order of the mayor, you're both under arrest for harboring a ghost. Well, this has been a tough day. Danny decides he doesn't need his powers anymore. I can't catch ghosts anymore, almost hurt my friends. Now my parents are arrested because of me? Danny, this is season three. You've been through way worse, but it could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. He deserves a break, not so much a retirement. <laughs> So how does he remove his powers? Well, the way Danny first got his abilities was by standing inside this ghost portal and turning it on. So by repeating that again, that takes his powers away or gives them back when done once more. They've done this a few times already, it's established. Danny's now a normal boy, except with some white streaks in his hair. That's not important. With no powers means no more risking his life having to balance school and endangering the people around him. This is great, unless you're his friends. I don't have my ghost powers anymore. I'm normal again. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Great. Thrilling. Don't you realize what this means? Yeah that you're just an average, everyday, not special human again. Hey, if it's what you wanted, then I'm glad for you, man. Looks like we'll have to find other things to occupy our time, huh? I really can't believe you did that. It feels like I lost a good friend, someone I was just starting to get to know. Yeah, Danny, we never liked you. We like Danny Phantom, not Fenton, but I guess we'll hang out with you out of pity. Like, what's the problem? They ain't the ones risking their lives every day. He deserves a break and he can get his powers back if he wants to. With his powers gone, the Master Blasters can protect the city. It's a win-win until they start charging for their services. Yes, quality ghost fighting is getting very expensive these days. Time, equipment, storage, it all adds up. Um, I know Vlad is a villain, but he's also a politician, which is redundant. But as a politician and mayor of the city, can't he just tax the people, then billing them up front? Well, that's what they were already doing. Maybe he needed more money, or maybe the writers forgot about that aspect. As mayor, I provided city funding for this top notch troop. Obviously, this billing idea was Vlad plan all along, which causes Sam to come out with this outburst. You're not you anymore. You're just a, a normal kid and a selfish one at that. How am I selfish? Because I don't want to endanger the people I care about the most? Your powers gave you a chance to change things, a chance that no one else had. And I was thrilled to be helping you. But now you're just one of the crowd again. You got to fight ghosts after school while other kids fought acne. And you don't really seem to care about what you gave up. I care. It's just... I care about you and my family more. When you had your powers, I knew that this town was protected from evil. But now, who knows where we're headed? Yeah, how dare you, Danny? How 
dare you care about your friends, family, and your own well-being? Why can't you be a rich, overworked father doing late-night business meetings and showing up late to your own son's karate recital while you wait till the last minute to buy him a Turbo Man doll the day before Christmas while Sinbad tries to publicly execute your son in broad daylight? You ever think about that, Danny? No, you don't. You just don't. And if you don't, you just don't. Biggie Smalls, 1993. We'll be back after these messages. Danny, and I'll always be there for you, but I can't live life just sitting on the sidelines. I'm surprised you think you can. The problem with Phantom Planet is everyone became impulsive assholes, Danny outright quits going ghost, while Sam's whole issue is she wants the city protected, which it is, at a price. All Sam seems to care about now is being different from the crowd and going thrill-seeking. I can understand if Danny's friends are supposed to be irrational and we should side with Danny, but the episode treats his friends like they were right all along and Danny's the bad guy. Like jeez, I think Danny should decide if he should keep doing this or not. This conflict could have worked, but their motives just made them ungrateful. I relate to Danny wanting to quit. My YouTube thing feels like it's going downhill and no one's hiring me to make character designs, so I don't know what to do outside of this. I'm going ghost! Ghost! Sam's guilt trip shames Danny into trying to get his powers back using the ghost portal, but his previous stunt destroyed it for some reason, or maybe he purposely destroyed it? It's never stated. Without the portal, Danny is but a humble normie. This conflict is immediately destroyed in the very next scene. So the ghost portal exploded. It's not the end of the world. You can always make another one. Okay, he can just rebuild the ghost portal. There goes all that drama. Danny lost his powers. Can he get him back? Yeah, but, you know, it'll be a while. Gee, I guess there's nothing to worry about. We interrupt this program to bring you breaking news from the Universal Observatory. Earlier today, our stellar readings indicated that a massive asteroid is hurtling across the solar system. Aw, snap! Turns out a giant meteor will be colliding with the Earth one week from now. If only Danny had his powers, he could... Um... Well, I guess his powers wouldn't be much help either way. Point is, they got one week left. The fate of the human race is at stake. One week. Use it wisely. As kids, did anyone else fear the world would get destroyed by a meteor or a black hole? I used to turn on the news expecting for some reason that would be the case. Clearly, it never happened and 100% of doomsday predictions turn out false. As for Danny's world, it being destroyed by meteors can be prevented. We got missiles. Countries are combining their greatest technology to stop the oncoming threat. Okay, that is total BS because I don't see a single North Korean flag on those missiles. Regardless, it's time to launch the missiles now. Launch the missile now! They launch the missiles now, but it is of no effect on the meteor. Every single missile hits a target! So, here's plan B. The evil mayor Vlad pays his longtime friend Danny's dad to go into space with a government-funded rocket to drill into the meteor and blow it up from the inside, which works. Or does it? I knew he could do it! There is no rock anywhere that can outsmart Jack Fenton! <gasps> the disasteroid. You had us blow up the wrong one, you idiot. Then what did we just blow up? The Hubble telescope. How 
did you not see that other bigger rock? Well, this was all part of the plan as Vlad just wanted Danny's dad to look stupid in front of the Earth. So Vlad gave him the wrong coordinates. But why would Vlad want the Earth destroyed when he lives on it? That's when we get into Plan C, announced in front of the town. Citizens of the Earth, I have news that will impact the entire world. If you guys don't act now, that meteor is going to impact the entire world. Vlad reveals he's actually a ghost and he will make the meteor phase through the Earth. So I guess he can make a massive object intangible, but at the price of the world making him the ruler, along with 500 billion dollars. Vlad, that's 500 billion dollars. What are you going to do with that money? The world agrees and Vlad carries out his promise. What is the meaning of this? Asteroid composed entirely of unique anti-ghost element, ectoranium. Ectoranium. Ectoranium? Then I can never touch it. No ghost can. That means the Earth is doomed. You know how ghosts are made out of ectoplasm? Well, this is their kryptonite. Ectoranium, a mineral that has never existed in the show until now in this very moment, all for the sake of causing a problem. This could have been acceptable had they introduced or hinted at its effect earlier somehow, but it just seems so much like a plot device. Having the meteor phase through the Earth is not going to work, but Danny has a plan. First, he needs the help from the evil ghosts in the dimensional void called the Ghost Zone. If the Earth is destroyed, the Ghost Zone is too. Here's hoping they'll listen to reason. The ghosts don't listen to reason, so they kill Danny. But it turns out shooting Danny transforms him into Danny Phantom. He has his powers back somehow. My powers are back! <laughs> Really? I think it would have made more sense if he died for real and his spirit left his body forming Danny Phantom. It's the final episode, go at it, kill him off and bring him back. The Legend of Korra got to kill off two people in a murder-suicide in their season one finale. <laughs> So how did he get his powers back? I read some Danny fan theory stating that the white streak in his hair meant that he still had some powers left. Thus, Danny just needed to recharge by getting blasted, as opposed to every other time he got blasted by ghosts and it only hurt him. Do you understand why I'm so confused by all this? Danny puts the ghost collab idea on hold to announce to the human world his plan that he assures us will cost no money, unlike Vlad's idea. Because we're not going to turn the asteroid intangible. We're going to turn the Earth intangible. <gasps> well, how exactly does someone make the entire Earth phase through the meteor? That's where Danny's other friend, Tucker the Black Nerd Comedy, has a solution. The new plan is very simple. With a strong enough ghostly power source and a big enough transfer device, we can send the ghost intangibility across the entire planet. This way, the disaster right will pass harmlessly through. Hey, that device looks a little familiar. Well, we got no other options, and according to Danny, this won't cost a dime. I have a plan, and this one is absolutely free. This idea just doesn't seem plausible at all. And if it weren't crazy enough, Phantom Boy hijacked his parents' ghost fighting jet to capture every single ghost in the ghost zone. At least I think every single one. It makes it seem like every single one, or like a million. I don't know. One down, 96 bazillion to go. All this in the span of a week, or maybe like an hour? Just one of these ghosts in any other episode was a major adversary to Danny. Suddenly now with this jet, he can capture a bazillion of them in no time? We're supposed to accept all of this, the cables, the ghost capturing, all in a week? One week. Use it wisely. I know this is a cartoon, but I could accept this if it's from the Looney Tunes. Not so much a superhero show grounded with some reality. They have the time to do all of this, but they don't have the time to simply try the missile drill again. We saw it destroy that decoy rock made up of the same properties. It would have worked, but no, just take the longer route. It's fine. Or instead of tubes, how about the device forms a barrier? Something more plausible, anything. Yeah! Yeah! 
Yet it all works out so that anyone touching the Earth is saved. By bad logic, any birds, planes, or astronauts hovering over the Earth are all dead. Maybe also anyone who jumped at the wrong time. They fell through the planet. Hey, you can't win them all. Where's the asteroid? And this convoluted plan works. The show is over. Danny's parents find out Danny Phantom was really Danny Fenton. Danny hooked up with Sam despite being an abusive asshole. And the other friend, Tucker, becomes the mayor. As the youngest mayor in Amity Park history, it's my great honor to present this commemorative statue. Why? He's not old enough to run for office and this whole mayor thing comes out of nowhere. I can only assume this was originally a bigger part of the episode, but got lost in the shuffle among so many bored artists making edits. The world is safe. Time for new beginnings. My dad even says he wants me to team up with him now. In the end, Phantom Planet could have worked if they had come up with a more plausible solution for the meteor, and if the character motives were less selfish, or if they are intended to be selfish, they did a good job making Danny look like the bad guy. It just seems like so many ideas were put into this, but they were all mismanaged. Had they given it some more refining, Phantom Planet could have been a good ending to the series. Cool statue. Personally, I would have made it out of recycled materials, but you know, that's just me. To save the planet, one superhero must lose his powers. Danny, can you hear me? Get them back again, kiss a girl, and team up with like a bazillion ghosts. Look, a portal! All in just one hour. There's not a ghost anywhere that can stand up to Danny Phantom. All specials are special, but some specials are just more special than others. Phantom Planet, the Danny Phantom special premieres this weekend at 10.30 and 4.30 on Nicktoons. He's flaccid. Danny Flaccid. Yo, Danny Flaccid, he was just 14 when he walked in on his parents doing something obscene. It was a view to a world unseen. He's gonna fuck them all because he's Danny Flaccid. When it didn't quite work, his folks, they just quit. Then Danny took a look inside of it. There was a great big splash and everything just changed. His mind got all rearranged. Flaccid, Flaccid. When he first woke up, he realized he had cum white hair and UTI green eyes. He could bang on walls, masturbate and cry. He was much more hung than the other guys. It was then he knew what he had to do. He had to fuck all the ghosts that were coming through. He's here to fuck me and you. He's gonna fuck them all because he's Danny Placid. He's gonna fuck them all because he's Danny Placid. He's gonna fuck them all because he's Danny Placid.